Hello. Welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. Tonight, I will be your guide on this journey to a peaceful sleep. Before I start our story, we will take a few moments to relax and settle down. Close your eyes and allow yourself to sink into the mattress. Feel the warmth and cosiness of the blanket that covers you. It is soft, just like a cloud. Savour the silence, or whatever noise you still hear. Maybe it's the sound of cars outside. Or maybe it's the gentle breeze of air from a fan. Or it could be raining outside. Listen to the water as it splashes the roof above. Isn't it pretty? Now breathe in a big, deep breath. Let go of any sad thoughts. Try not to worry about anything right now. Let your feet relax. Let your neck, head, and shoulders sink into the pillow. Take another deep breath. Feel the fresh air move into your lungs, filling your body. Let that feeling travel like honey through you, beginning at the top of your head. Inhale as the honey feeling moves down your face and neck, shoulders and arms. Exhale as it travels down your tummy, legs, and finally your toes. Is it easier to feel quiet now? Do you notice how everything else seems to slow down when you do? It feels good, right? Now that you are comfortable, I will begin our story. Tonight's story is What took place in the palace of the Snow Queen and what happened afterward. Are you ready? Let's begin. Once upon a time, a Snow Queen lived in a mysterious land of ice. Her palace was also built of ice and she ruled with a cold, and cruel heart. The Snow Queen's palace contained hundreds of halls that stretched as far as the eye could see. The snow around her palace was high, blocking out the sun. It glistened beneath the Aurora Borealis. All day long, and all night too, the wild wind blew. Snow fell, twirling in the air on its way to the ground. However, this was not a place of happiness. No wildlife could survive in the region. There were no arctic foxes or polar bears, no fluffy rabbits or even birds. Still, it was beautiful. The northern lights glimmered a rainbow of colours onto the smooth snow. Their colours were radiant. Rich violet, bright pink, teal and sapphire blue. The aurora borealis above looked like glass wind chimes, the way the colours bumped up against and ran into one another. Yet it felt like music without sound. 
One of the halls in the palace was larger than the rest. There was a great portal at its entrance, one that led to unknown places. In the centre of the hall was a frozen lake. Its surface was splintered, as though someone had smashed it with a hammer. Shards of the ice lay in intricate patterns on top of the lake, each exact same height and width. The lake was a mosaic, designed by the Snow Queen. She called the lake the Mirror of Understanding, and claimed that it was the only one like it in the world. In the centre of the frozen lake, there was a throne also made of ice. This was where the Snow Queen sat, the ruler of this dominion. The Snow Queen wore a crown made of blue snowflakes. Her hair was so blonde, almost white. Her royal robes were made of an enchanted fabric. Her eyes were an icy blue, her gaze as sharp and piercing as an icicle. The Snow Queen's long, thin fingers weaved through the air as she cast spells and gave orders to her captive, Little Kay. Little Kay was only a shadow of his former self. He could not remember the happy child he had been before. He sat on the ice near the Snow Queen's throne, not noticing how cold it was. He wore no jacket or gloves. His skin was various shades of blue and purple. The Snow Queen had used her cold, cold magic on him, freezing his heart. The Snow Queen watched as little Kay picked up pieces of ice from the lake's surface. He began to set them on the ground in different shapes. Suddenly, the geometric shapes filled his vision. They turned into words before his eyes. The Snow Queen saw that little Kay was onto something. If you can arrange the shards into the symbol for eternity, she said, I will grant you your freedom. I will even give you a pair of ice skates. Oh. Little Kay always wanted a pair of ice skates. And this was the perfect place to have them. He imagined himself gliding across the surface of the lake. But the truth was, he'd never skated before. Little Kay accepted the Snow Queen's offer. As he tried to come up with a symbol for eternity, the Snow Queen told him that she was going somewhere where the weather was warmer. I am going to see pristine beaches and salt water, she told Little Kay palm trees and sunshine, all those lizards and vacationers smeared with sunscreen. I intend to bring them all a bit of winter. The Snow Queen rose into the air and flew up and away, her long hair trailing behind her like a sheet of fine silk. She enjoyed flying, the cool breeze against her skin, the weightlessness. As little Kay continued to arrange and rearrange the pieces of ice, he began to feel a sense of calm. He looked up at the northern lights. Stars appeared around them. Night fell. The sparkling stars appeared like fragments of ice, suspended in the sky. All was silent, except for the occasional sound of water splashing beneath the lake. Little Kay had held a piece of ice up to the light. It began to melt. It dripped down, each drop sliding into tiny crevices between the ice below. It didn't matter if Little Kay could spell eternity, or a symbol for eternity, because he knew what eternity was in his heart, and he understood that eternity was not just inside him, but inside everything. He took a deep breath 
and felt as if his lungs could contain the entire universe. He was small and grand, all at once. The great portal near the hall's entrance buzzed to life. It swirled iridescent and pearly white. Suddenly, little Gerda burst through the portal. She was little Kay's neighbour, and they loved each other like brother and sister. It was a miracle that little Gerda made it through. The portal, guarded by the wind, blew away anyone who approached. But when the gale force tried to blow little Gerda away, she recited a powerful verse. The verse was ancient and hallowed, and upon hearing it, the winds fled away. It seemed that the children had some power of their own, even if they didn't yet understand it. Little Gerda entered the hall and hurried over to little Kay. She wrapped him in a hug, happy to have finally found him after searching for so long. Little Kay appeared ill and bruised, his complexion covered in a fine layer of frost. He didn't move, even as his dearest friend, little Gerda, hugged him. He stood like a statue of ice, completely frozen. Little Gerda shook him by the shoulders, and still, he did not move. She began to cry. Her tears were so hot, they fell onto little Kay as she held him. They burned through his clothes and reached his skin. Then, the tears penetrated his heart, and, bit by bit, it began to thaw. Little Gerda's tears were also powerful. They could heal both her and little Kay. She started to sing a melody, soft and warm. Her voice, like hot cocoa, so sweet, and seemed to cover little Kay from the cold. He closed his eyes as he listened to her. The words she sang were, The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet, and the angels descend, they're the children to greet. Hearing her song, little Kay also began to cry. The tears welled up in his eyes, and he opened them. Then he recognised her, his beloved friend. His reunion with little Gerda was like magic. Even the bricks of ice that stood for walls came to life. The walls started to dance. The icicles clattered against each other, jumping for joy until they fell back into place. Little Kay hugged little Gerda for a long moment, enjoying the warmth of her loving embrace. The symbol for eternity now came to little Kay. But he didn't need to move the shards of ice, for they had moved themselves. They had danced and then rearranged themselves in the shape of eternity. Little Kay laughed out loud. He laughed once more when he saw how his breath looked like clouds of smoke in the air. Now he would be free from the Snow Queen's control, and he would also get the pair of ice skates she had promised him. Little Gerda noticed her friend was still shivering, even though he smiled. She wrapped him in her coat and rubbed his arms until he began to warm up. The blue colour draining from his face. She warmed his hands between hers, not caring if the Snow Queen was going to return. He had earned his freedom. Little Gerda kissed his palms, and he giggled. He was truly happy. After little Kay was warm, he took little Gerda's hand, and they wandered out of the hall. As they walked... They discussed all the things he had missed. He breathed in the fresh air, glad to be out of the Snow Queen's wretched palace. He asked about their grandmother, 
She liked to tell them stories and read to them from interesting, exotic books. How little Kay missed her. They talked about their hometown and the roses that grew around their homes. Has anything changed? Little Kay asked Little Gerda. It's all exactly like you left it, she assured him. They continued to walk for a long, long time. And wherever they stepped, flowers began to bloom. New grass started to grow. The clouds in the sky parted, and the bright morning sun shone on them. At first, the light was a shock to little Kay, who had been in the dim snow palace for so long. But after his eyes adjusted, he started to enjoy the warmth of the sun on his face. It made him feel wide awake. After several more hours, they reached a bush. There were plump, ripe berries growing there, ruby red, juicy and sweet. Little Kay plucked some of the berries and ate them. As he did, he felt his strength returning. Little Gerda ate some of the berries as well. They walked in silence, enjoying their snack. In the quiet, they could hear the sounds of the wild. Birds chirped in the distance, their calls as pretty as little Gerda's song. They rested for a few minutes. A reindeer approached them, putting his nose right into little Gerda's palm. She hesitated, but the reindeer seemed friendly. His antlers looked like tree branches. He had long legs and brown and white fur. The children took turns petting the reindeer's soft coat. The reindeer sat down on the ground in front of them and soon began to snore. Little Kay and little Gerda sat down as well, continuing to pet the reindeer as it napped. After a short time, it awoke. Little Gerda and little Kay climbed onto the reindeer's back. It began to carry them across the wilderness running strong and fast. The world seemed to fly right by. Presently, they arrived at the dwelling of the Finland woman. She was very hospitable. Her hair was pulled back into a silver bun. Little Kay had the feeling that he'd met her before, but some of his memories were still rather vague. The reindeer sat outside as the children entered the Finland woman's cottage. It was so nice and warm inside. A crackling fire burned. The whole cottage smelled like freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. Plants sat on the windowsill, and ceramic figurines lined the fireplace mantel. The Finland woman invited them to take a seat. The children relaxed on the plush sofa, letting their tired bodies fall into the cushions. The Finland woman sat several teacups on the coffee table. She retrieved a kettle of boiling water from the kitchen, placed a tea bag in each cup, then tilted the kettle, pouring hot water into each one. The tea bags floated to the top of the water. The whirls of steam danced. Little Kay added honey to his tea and stirred it. It spun like a whirlpool. As he raised the cup of tea, its heat radiated through to his hands. He took a sip, and it thawed out the last remaining chills from the Snow Queen's palace. The children drank their tea while the Finland woman told them about the rest of their journey. The old woman could foresee the future. The hardest part of your journey is behind you, she reassured the two children. Afterward, they returned outside. There, the reindeer greeted them, digging his hooves into the ground. The Finland woman bid them farewell and watched as they rode away. Next, the reindeer took them to see the Lapland woman. She also lived in a cottage, but hers was in a lush forest, surrounded by greenery and life. Little Kay breathed in the warm air, it gave him energy and focus. The Lapland woman was less friendly 
than the Finland woman, but just as helpful. Her brown hair appeared unbrushed, and her face was smudged with dirt, but she wore fine clothes and carried herself with pride. The Lapland woman hurried the children inside. Once more, the reindeer rested on the front lawn, munching on some leaves and grass. She gave them clothes to wear while she took theirs. They sat quietly as she examined each article of clothing. She put on a pair of glasses, turned on the orange desk lamp, and started to stitch. Her hands moved methodically, sliding down the fabric, raising and lowering the needle. Soon, every rip was repaired, every stain scrubbed out. The children were so grateful. Their clothes looked as good as new, now with a faint lavender scent. Little Kay wondered how the Lapland woman was able to wash and dry their clothes so quickly. It still had that toasty feeling, like it was fresh out of the dryer. However, the Lapland woman wasn't much of a conversation. She liked living alone. Sometimes she spent entire weeks not uttering a single word. The quiet brought her peace, allowed her to hear the sound of her own heartbeat, her breath, and her soul. Soon, little Kay and little Gerda said goodbye to the Lapland woman. They thanked her for fixing and cleaning their clothes. As they started to mount the reindeer, little Gerda recognised a voice coming from over the hedge. She looked and saw a girl riding a beautiful steed. She was a robber maiden. Little Gerda could tell by the red hat she wore and the pistol strapped to her waist. The girl turned around and recognised little Gerda right away. They were old friends. They were overjoyed to see one another. Little Gerda last saw the robber girl when she left home to be an outlaw and find adventure. She commended little Gerda and little Kay for travelling, but jokingly asked if little Kay was worth saving. Little Gerda grinned at little Kay. Of course he was worth saving. He was her best friend. They told the robber maiden about all their experiences before she went on her way. The robber maiden took their hands in hers and promised she would visit them one day. Little Gerda knew that the robber maiden always kept her word. She waved at them as she rode away on her horse. When the reindeer left to return to its family, the children had to complete the rest of their journey on foot. They should have been exhausted from the long trek, but they weren't tired at all. They felt happy, energised, and strong. Spring arrived all at once. Flowers sprouted, bees buzzed. Little Kay looked around, taking in the scenery. He heard the sound of church bells. He peered ahead and saw church towers ahead, the same ones from their village. That meant they were nearly home. The church bells rang again, and the sound enveloped little Kay and little Gerda. Their chime echoed, and its music filled their hearts. Both children stood entranced, charmed by the bells. They were like Tibetan singing bowls, their vibrations penetrating the land. Little Kay knew that this was all a miracle. Him, standing here with little Gerda, the soft grass beneath his feet, the church bells ringing out a song of peace. When the bells went quiet, little Kay and little Gerda ran, hand in hand. They ran until they reached their grandmother's home, and little Gerda was right. Everything was just as they had left it. On the wall, a clock ticked, counting each passing second. They looked at one another, and realised that they were now grown up. They sat down in the child-sized rocking chairs, which their grandmother kept for them. Little Kay felt safe sitting across from his grandmother. 
He couldn't remember the last time he'd felt such peace. He basked in this feeling now, the sweet awareness that everything was going to be all right. Their grandmother had hung roses on the wall to dry. When they were completely done, she'd take them down and trim the petals into a bowl. The dried flowers would sit on the table and give the house a lovely fragrance. Little Kay could hardly remember the chill of the Snow Queen's palace, for it was so warm and comfortable here. The whole journey up to this moment felt like a dream. Little Kay and little Gerda were happy to be home. Their grandmother sat and pulled a stack of books onto her lap. Little Kay and Little Gerda were no longer children, but they would always be her grandchildren. A ray of sunlight fell over Grandmother, bathing her in an angelic glow. She opened her Bible and began to read. Her silvery voice rose and fell like music as the words danced in the air. Unless you become as little as children... You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Gerda and Kay, who were no longer little children, smiled at one another, because they understood, even though their bodies were all grown up, their hearts would stay forever young. When it was time, the next summer season came, bringing new life, and it was magical. I hope you enjoyed this story. Good night.